Okay, so this is the question. Let me um, first read the question out loud and then I will look at parts A, B, and C. So it says, consider the circuit shown below, find the current I1, I2, I3, and when um, A, the switch S is first closed, B, F, oh, I guess that's A, B, and C. Oh, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, <laughs> this is the circuit given. So, um, so I guess I'm supposed to imagine this being open. So if this switch is open, then this battery is basically out of action because it's not imposing any, uh, you know, it's not connected at this end. So it's not really imposing any voltage difference across any elements. So uh, at, uh, at the very beginning, we are starting out with everything being zero. Current I1, I2, and I3 are zero. So I guess that's uh, worth writing down. So let me uh, write it down here um, at, let's say time less than zero. So before we start, uh, we can say because the switch S should be first open, say that all the currents, I1, I2, and I3, they are all zero. So that's our starting point. And I was saying that this question is easier than another similar question. Um, I'm asking the same homework set. It's because I'm reading at the part A, B, and C. I see it's asking for when the switch is first closed and it's asking for steady state current. And then it's asking for when the switch is reopened after a long time. And what all of this, these are pointing at is that we are looking at either transients or some kind of asymptotic behavior. So that, and you know, this part, for part C, I would reset it and say it's another t equals zero, except with the different initial conditions. So, so that means I shouldn't really be doing any detailed calculation. Uh, detailed calculations should only become necessary when the question is asking for, you know, some, um, some time that's between zero and infinity at some finite time when the current is in between those um, transient or asymptotic behavior, that's when you need detailed formulas and equations. And I, I guess this is, so I say it's easier um, as someone who has a lot of experience with the circuit, but I think maybe questions like these are something that causes more problem to people who are, who don't, haven't had the chance to develop that intuition yet, because you may be looking for a formula to plug in numbers into, and there are no such formulas. So let me walk you through those intuitive reasoning processes that I would walk through as I'm analyzing this. The biggest thing that I need is this, that the voltage difference across the inductor, it's given by this particular expression that characterizes the inductor, which is the change of voltage across the inductor is inductance times rate of change of current. It's coming from Faraday's law and all that stuff. <laughs> but this, you can use this as a starting point to, well, forgetting about Faraday's law. And this has a very specific impact on the current through the inductor. So this current I2, um, basically the constraint on I2 is that I2 cannot change suddenly because uh, imagine I2 were to change suddenly. Imagine a plot of I2 that looks like this. Um, as a function of time, it started out at some zero value, and then it suddenly changed to some non-zero value. If we did that, then at this point, you would have di to dt approaching infinity. That's the slope of a straight line, and or straight vertical line. And um, the, the, so in this circuit, after switch S is closed, the maximum voltage available is limited by the battery voltage. So since you don't have infinite voltage, so you can't have sudden current change for the current through the inductor. So 
when the switch is first closed, that gives us a quick answer here. This I to here, that should be zero, just from the get-go. And once you figure out that I2 is zero, that simplifies the remainder of the analysis. So since there's no current flowing through here, you can kind of imagine that this is disconnected altogether. Um, the inductor isn't even there. That's how it would behave at time equals zero. So, oh, so this is simple uh, two registers in series. So I would say, all right, the current I1 and I3 should be the same. They are in series. And that same value of current would be um, oh, in terms of E, E divided by R1 plus R2. And that'll be the same value here. One thing that worries me a little bit is um, if there might be a programming error in the question. So let me plug those in, make sure the system grades it as correct. And if it doesn't, let me, I'll fix that. Uh, uh, this zero should get graded as correct. And uh, the other one, I will see what's uh, wrong in the code and fix it. Uh, so, oh, wow, that's interesting. Graded it as correct. With that, let me finish um, covering through the remainder of the question because, uh, yeah. And just to be clear, this is a bug with my open math. It's not bug with the question. It's not my fault. It's someone else's fault. Well, not really, but anyways. So that's uh, part A. Uh, when the switch is first closed, this inductor basically acts like a short and um, not short, acts like open circuit. So you treat it as if uh, it's not there and the rest of the circuit becomes a simple register circuit. Now, um, so for part B, it's asking for after a long time, steady state currents. And that's a key part here, which means this uh, uh, time derivative, di dt, this is going to go to zero at steady state. That's kind of what steady state means. Time derivatives are zero. So, so under this situation, this inductor acts like a simple wire or now short. So um, you have to kind of walk through this to uh, thinking what this means. And I think the easiest thing to nail down is actually this I3 because um, what this is short across here means is that the voltage drop um, well, let me label it this way. The voltage drop across R2, that voltage drop is going to be zero. Then according to Ohm's law, if uh, a register has a zero voltage across it, then the current through R2 or I3 must be zero. That's the only conclusion you can draw from the uh, knowing that the voltage from here to here across the inductor is zero. So, all right, that, that gives me I3 right away. I3 is zero. Then once you figure out that far, then uh, for the remainder of analysis, what you might do is ignore this um, segment of our uh, circuit because you already figured out zero current flows through here. So whether it's uh, actually connected or not, doesn't matter. Either way, no current flows through there. Then the rest of the circuit looks like a single, oh, single register circuit since uh, the inductor should be treated like wire in this case. So I1 is just uh, um, the voltage divided by R1 and I2. So looking at the circuit here, this current is the same current that should flow as I2. So I2 should be the same, E divided by R1. And finally, part C, when it says the switch S is reopened after a long time. Um, so this is what you should consider. So let me erase some of these. Um, I guess the, your initial condition, the starting point is that for this I2, you have a value of I2 that's gonna be what you have here. That's the steady state current you have for I2 
E over R1. And when this switch is reopened, this current, it has to remain the same because I2 cannot change it suddenly. That's the property of inductor. So, so, so that's the one kind of fixed point that you can use in filling in the rest of the gap. And let me uh, um, modify the rest of the numbers based on my new input that the, the switch is now open. Um, which means, oh, I, I guess no current can flow through this branch since um, it's broken circuit. So I1 must be zero, easy. And I2, I wrote that down already, E over R1. And I3 should be, oh, um, I guess, so now that you know there's no current through here, you treat this as an open circuit here. You can ignore this entire branch and uh, what you have remaining is, let me erase some of these uh, kind of distracting right ones. What you have remaining for the rest of the circuit is that um, you have um, this path, of this single path for the rest of the circuit, I2 through here. And at this junction, I guess current has to go here and then here and then here. Now, one thing I don't, I'm not quite sure is I, if I'm expected to put I3 as a signed quantity, in which case I would say minus E over R1 because it's going in the opposite direction from the label the direction, or if I'm supposed to put in the absolute value. Yeah, no, I'm seeing that it should have a sign. Okay, let, so let me try putting this in with a sign because uh, there's apparently some not a coding, there's some programming issue with the question. So let me put this in and just to make sure that you have a way to uh, enter an answer that will be graded as correct uh, with all the issues that I'm highlighting. There's apparently some syntax error stuff that's going on. Uh, so I3 is zero, oops, zero. Um, I1 is zero, I2 is E over R1 and um, and uh, yeah, so okay, so that's correct. Yeah, and uh, I'll reach out to the my open math people to get them, <laughs> have them fix this uh, cosmetic error because it shouldn't really do that. <laughs>